Previously on Sudrian Conflict, late one night in the Diesel Works where only Den and Derek were, Simon and his crew came in and set fire to the Diesel Works. Derek perished in the fire. Den barely survived but was unable to speak due to trauma. Simon then lied about what had happened to Sir Topham Hatt, telling him that Mr. Percival was responsible. This made Sir Topham Hatt very angry. His assistant, Phil Ardman, attempted to talk him out of it using logic. This made Sir Topham Hatt so angry that he fired Ardman on the spot. Later, Diesel was persuaded to believe that it was the steam engines doing that the diesel works burned down. That night, he confronted the steam engines about it. Later, Simon stood up on the cliff face, proud of the damage he had done to Sodor. And now, the next installment. We found him here at about 7 a.m. Looks like he's been here a few hours. Uh, sir? Sir? <gasps> yeah, what? 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 Sir, what? sir, sir, please stay calm. You are on Sodor now. <laughs> oh, oh, nein. Dear Rotter Army, see Coleman. Hide. Wir müssen ein Vorstecken. My god, he's been alone for so long, he's made up his own language. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's just. German, sir. Oh, right, of course. Yes. We mustn't unfrobrighten. Sir, sir, please calm down. Just take a deep breath. Take this man to the hospital at once. He's clearly been at sea for a very long time. Try to find out his name. All right, everyone, I've got a great idea. Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Percival are already at each other's throats, but there needs to be one more thing to push them over the edge, and I think I know just what to do. Why, hello there. My associates and I have a proclamation to make. What? We have a proposal to make. You trying to marry me? <laughs> no, no, let me explain. What we would like you to do is... <laughs> oh yeah, I can do that real easy. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, Diesel, come here. Uh, the yard man wants me to be shunted over by Scruffy. I'm not in the mood for your games today. No, really. Scruffy, how's it going? It's been a while. What the... How'd you get over here? Yeah, I pulled a few strings. Anyway, listen, I gotta talk to you about something. I got a big plan. Basically, what they want us to do is... You... Whoa. Yeah. I'll tell the other trucks about it. Excellent. <laughs> Hold back! Hold back! The trucks complied with Scruffy's orders and put on their brakes. Percy struggled to pull the train forwards. Man, they're feisty today. The coupling between Percy and Scruffy was very worn out and soon it snapped, sending the trucks barreling off backwards in the other direction, straight into the tunnel. The trucks crashed through the buffers and laughed triumphantly. Really, Bertram, aren't we beyond this? Duncan and Rusty the Diesel Engine now work on the Scarlowy Mine. They used to work in the transfer yards, but it has since shut down. There had been a period of time in which they were concerned that they were not going to have work anymore. But the two engines now work happily together in the quarry. That day, Mr. Percival paid them a visit. Hello, sir. Hello, you two. How are you enjoying working in the mine? Oh, it's great. It's it's just wonderful. Really? You don't, you don't feel overworked at all? You're not tired? Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I, I, I'm totally... I can handle it. You I, can handle it? I haven't slept in three days. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> the next day, Mr. Percival came to the shed with big news. Everyone, I know there's been an increase in work lately, and as a result, I have purchased a new engine. The engines were excited. There had not been a new engine in a very long time. Here he is. 
His name is Bertram. Please try to make him feel welcome. Telly ho, gents. It is my aspiration that we might have an extraordinarily wondrous experience working together on this, the most beauteous of all the Sudrick Railways. The engines did not know what to say. Finally, Duke spoke up. Oh, how exquisitely wondrous it is to finally hear an individual who speaks my language. My friends and I are very obliged to meet your acquaintance. What railway are you from, Bertram? Soon, all the engines were talking and had made friends with Bertram. It was no coincidence that Bertram had the same first name as a certain fat controller. When Sir Topham Hatt received word of this, he was not pleased. Why, the nerve of that man. I'll give him a phone call right now. Give him what for. Give him a piece of my mind. Busy? We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.